hi everyone in today's lecture we will learn test of hypothesis the basic terminology involved in this test of hypothesis will be seen here so the main terminology in this testing processes process or like null hypothesis alternative hypothesis level of significance critical region test, test statistic and decision making decision so these are the these are the basic steps which are involved in our testing process in the test of hypothesis these are the main things we need to discuss about so firstly let us know what is the necessity of testing a hypothesis so hypothesis is nothing but a statement about the parameter suppose you are dealing with decision making process about the population and about its parameter of the population suppose uh, you are interested in suppose you are interested in effectiveness of a particular vaccine suppose a particular uh, claim is that this vaccine is effective about 90 percent so the claim is that the 90 percent of average effectiveness is there with this particular vaccine that is the claim and that is what you are test for so the statement whatever is been given that statement is called as hypothesis here the hypothesis in this particular case about the population is the effectiveness of the vaccine is 90 percent otherwise i can say mu is equals to 90 percent and we are we are checking we are we are uh, our interest is to uh, decide whether this statement this claim is to be accepted or it is to be rejected so with a trust process uh, we'll make the decision in this way but for that we'll look into what null hypothesis first a null hypothesis it is also denoted with h naught so null hypothesis is the one which is the hypothesis the whole purpose of the test I mean, uh, this statement is to reject so your whole purpose is to reject it the statement which is made about the population parameter but your whole purpose of framing it is to reject it so in your mind you are fixing that you have to reject the statement and you are you are going to get a conclusion whether your statement is to be rejected or accepted that is however a diff different task so null hypothesis is the one it's a claim it's a statement about a particular parameter suppose say in our case if it is mu is equal to 90 percent but your whole whole intention is to reject this null hypothesis that is how we frame it frame it and the second one is alternative hypothesis alternative hypothesis alternative hypothesis is the statement about the parameter again but in a contradictory way to this null hypothesis so whatever the null hypothesis has been made you are writing the alternative hypothesis which is denoted with h1 in a contradictory way which differs from your null hypothesis something like mu not is equal to 90 percent it is not effective the vaccine is not effective with 90 percent guarantee otherwise you may be writing like mu less than 90 percent it is effective but with with a chance of 90 percent lesser than 90 percent or you may be writing the alternative hypothesis mu greater than 90 percent this is how we define in any in either of these cases we can define alternative hypothesis so alternative hypothesis is the one the statement which is contradictory to the null hypothesis now here we must look into three different uh, phenomena like suppose your null hypothesis uh, sorry your alternative hypothesis is of not is equal to type something like this as in the previous example we name it as two tailed or two sided alternative hypothesis h1 or if it is of less than type less than 90 something like that it is said to be left sided left sided alternative hypothesis or if it is of greater than type something like mu greater than 90 in the above example it is called as right sided alternative hypothesis h1 so 
the alternate hypothesis can be any of these three different ways. Either it is two-tailed, otherwise left-tailed or right-tailed. Depending upon our choice, we uh, make use of this alternative hypothesis. And let us come back to this alternative hypothesis whenever we are dealing with the critical regions. And uh, but for that, uh, as, as as of now, I'm I'm dealing with the, the third one, which is a level of significance. Level of significance. So level of significance is the one which is denoted with alpha and which is probability of counting type 1 error. So we need to deal with two types of errors here. Let me define them first. Type 1 error and it is of type 2 error. These are the two basic things you have to know to define what the level of significance is. See, in the decision making process, there may be few things which are going to arise like suppose your H0 is, I mean the, the, the claim, the statement about the parameter may be true, but you are deciding that it is accepted. or it may be rejected. So though the statement H0 is true, there is a chance that you may reject the null hypothesis. This, this case may arise which is called as type 1 error. So type 1 error is the one that rejecting H0 though it is true. The chances are there in the decision process in, in this way or suppose if H0 is false but there are chances to accept it and which is called as type 2 error. So type 2 error is the one which is accepting H0 though it is false. So these make cases rise in the decision process, in the test process. Otherwise these are all, I mean, correct decisions only. So there is no ambiguity in these two cases. There are no errors in these two cases. Though it is true, you have accepted it. Statement is true, you have accepted it means you have taken a dec correct decision. And the statement is false, you have, you have taken it right, I mean, you have rejected it means it is a right decision again. But these two are the wrong decisions, we name them as type 1 and type 2 errors. And I am telling you these two errors are inversely proportional to one another. I mean if one is getting raised and the other one will get decreased and if one is I mean decreased the other one may be raised. See the level of significance, level of significance alpha is nothing but the probability of committing the type 1 error. Suppose if this alpha is equal to 1 percent, what does this mean? This means there are 1 percent chances out of 100 that the statement is to be rejected if it is true. Though it is true, there are 1 percent of chances that reject the null hypothesis. This is what your level of significance is. So since it is a rejection, uh, if it is a true statement, it should be not a greater number. It should be always, I mean, or 1% one, 1 or 5% or so. It is not more than a 10% or so. However, there are chances to indicate with any number, but it should be lesser than 5% or 5. Now, the probability of committing type 2 error also will arise. The, the probability of type 2 error is indicated with beta and we do not use this in the test process. We, I am not uh, I mean, forcing it to learn about it. Now, so this level of significance has to be fixed before our test process only. It should be there in our mind. If you are rejecting an null hypothesis in which uh, what must be the percentage to reject this, this uh, given uh, null hypothesis that should be fixed prior to the test process only. Next is that the other point is that critical region the probability of committing type 1 error is alpha and it depends on your alternative hypothesis also. Suppose as as I have told you like alternative hypothesis may be of 
not equal to type. In the previous example, if it is 90, and alternative hypothesis may be of less than type, or alternative hypothesis may be of greater than type. Depend upon this, we recognize how, how and what a critical region is. See, the random variable, I mean, the sample statistic may follow some distribution. Usually, we will take it as a normal distribution in which your level of significance can be taken in the two sides, two tails of this normal distribution. Suppose that this is the statistic, suppose it, I do not know what it is, like Z is the statistic we are looking at. Sample statistic is Z, which is following normal distribution. And since level of significance alpha and that alpha region could be placed in between, I mean, placed in the two tails of this normal distribution. This is the area, this is the region which is called as a critical region. If it is, if, it, if your alternative hypothesis is, uh, not equal to type and if it is of less than type and your statistic is following the normal distribution and that should be that level of significance should be in the left tail of the distribution and if it have greater than type and the statistic is following the normal distribution you are level of significance should be in the right tail of the distribution. This is the region which is alpha called as critical region. See, once this right side is alpha by 2 and this is alpha by 2, sum of these two is equal to alpha, whole will give you a critical region. So, this is what known as critical region. Critical region is been placed here in this two parts of this, two tails of this normal distribution. Whereas, this is called as acceptance region, acceptance region. So, likewise, this is here acceptance region and here in this part is reject, I mean, acceptance region. So, in this is the region in which the null hypothesis is to be I mean, rejected, though it is true and in this region it is, it is to be accepted. So, it depends, the critical region depends on the alternative hypothesis that you have selected and your test statistic. The next point is that test statistic, test statistic. So, there will be a formula to find this test statistic. I denote it as Z calculated and this the formula will be in this way. Statistic, suppose I am denoting it as T minus mean of the statistic, otherwise expectation, expected value of the statistic over standard error of the statistic t. Suppose if t is your statistic of the sample, t is the mathematical measure of the sample and your z calculated like test statistic in this test process can be taken as statistic minus expectation of the expectation of it divided by standard error or standard deviation of the statistic. So, this is to be calculated. Now, once your critical region is this thing, your statistic value here is denoted with z alpha by 2 and this obviously will be minus z alpha by 2. Since the curve is symmetric, this is how we denote it as if it is 0 and here it is denoted with minus z alpha and this is the point at which the right side region is alpha is denoted with z alpha and these values are here called as critical values. So, critical values are the values for, um, for them the right side otherwise left side is alpha like level of significance is there. The region to the right side of this z alpha or z uh, minus z alpha or um, the particular region is alpha units. See, so in your hand, in your hand z alpha z alpha by 2 is there, I mean critical values are there and then is z calculated values there. So, based on these two values, now we decide whether to reject the null hypothesis or to accept the null hypothesis. How? Suppose your z calculated value is less than z alpha, then we need to accept the null hypothesis. Otherwise, otherwise we have to reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we have to reject it. So, this is the test process. We have to accept the null hypothesis whenever 
z calculated value is less than z alpha. So, depending upon this strategy, we will make the decision about the hypothesis, about the statement of the parameter. So, these are the major steps which are involved in this test, I mean, testing of hypothesis or testing of significance also we can say. Thank you.